Well, all of a sudden, uh, the news broke approximately a week ago that a few members of the European Parliament and former members were, quote, receiving money in order to whitewash the image of one country in the Gulf, apparently, supposedly, is Qatar at the time of the World Cup, and to somehow influence also economic and political decision-making at the European level. This news caught by surprise many observers, the European public, because the role of money in politics in Europe has always been very modest, almost invisible. So all of a sudden, we have a sort of house of cards case here in Europe, and we are all a bit under shock. Well, four suspects have been charged. What do we know about them and specifically what they've been accused of? The most prominent accused is the former vice president of the European Parliament. She has been suspended. She's a current member uh, of the parliament today. Eva Kiley, a former journalist coming from Greece. She has been in the parliament, a congresswoman for over a decade. Very visible, uh, very proactive, uh, in particular on technology regulation. And the second is a former member of parliament, Italian of origin, running an NGO in Brussels called Against Impunity, which has been raising a lot of eyebrow. And the others are staffers, so people who have been working with them over the years. What have investigators revealed so far about the raids they've conducted? The Belgian police and the Belgian prosecutors have unveiled that those four individuals and possibly others have been working together uh, in order to make statements and to basically promote the interest of Qatar in European policy making. And therefore, they have identified a pattern. And they even found um, uh, piles of money or cash in the apartments of several of those individuals who have been immediately put into custody. And today they are having the first uh, meeting uh, with the prosecutors uh, and therefore we're going to be hearing more in the coming days and hours. And as you mentioned, the finger is being pointed at the Qatari government, but it says any claims of misconduct are gravely misinformed. Why do prosecutors believe otherwise? The prosecutors have been working on this investigation since last summer. So they've been working on this for over four months. We don't know exactly which the sources are, but it's pretty clear that if they've led to finding uh, these uh, piles of money and cash in those apartments, there's a clear manifest violation. And they probably have good sources to track this uh, money and this funding uh, to, to the country uh, in question. They never actually mentioned Qatar. Uh, in, in public documents, but a lot of sources very close uh, to the prosecutors have revealed that this Qatar, the country at stake. So this is remain uh, something that has to be uh, probably confirmed in, in the coming hours. But again, I expect a major acceleration of, of, of revelations in, 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 in the next few hours. Can you explain to us uh, why people think that it might be linked to the Football World Cup? Well, I think there is um, a pattern uh, that today is possible to identify. Uh, the choice uh, to give Qatar the World Cup is a, is a choice that dates back more than 10 years. Uh, and during those years, there have been a lot of investigative journalists identifying uh, attempts by Qatar to corrupt uh, not only FIFA, but also many other officials, including now we see the European politicians. So there is a pattern suggested that Qatar has been proactively uh, not only pushing for being selected as the host of the World Cup, but also creating um, an environment which was somehow enabling itself uh, to look ready uh, to host uh, such, a, uh, such a big sports event and to possibly leverage on such an event in order to get even a better uh, international standing. The European Union is about to decide whether to grant visa-free status to Qatar. So Qataris would be able to enter into the European Union without being subject to a visa requirement. And it's pretty clear that at the moment, we suspect that several members of European Parliament might have been approached in order to vote favorably to that decision, which, by the way, has been suspended. So the Parliament won't be voting on this as a result of this investigation. And you say this could just be the tip of the iceberg. Tell us a bit more about uh, overall what these revelations might tell us about the state of European democracy and transparency in the parliament there. Well, the European integrity system has always been 
quite good on paper, quite sophisticated, quite advanced, uh, certainly wider uh, than the one that exists at the national level. However, we can also see in these particular circumstances how many loopholes have been conducive to misbehavior. Uh, for instance, uh, the members of the European Parliament are allowed to engage into side jobs, and approximately one, qu one quarter of the members of Parliament today have side jobs. That means they are in a permanent and hindrance situation of conflict of interest. They are working for themselves while also serving for the public interest. At the same time, the very same members of parliament are not subject to any reporting duty when it comes to their meetings. So they're meeting a lot of stakeholders, but there's no traceability. And therefore, uh, this absence of rules has created a culture of impunity that has been a particularly conducive to this kind of misbehavior, or at least has reduced the accountability checks that civil society, journalists, and watchdogs might have played, and they would have played in a different kind of constitutional order, like at the national level. So the European Parliament remains a bit hidden from the attention, from the scrutiny uh, of many actors. And these might also have played a role and explains why this kind of scandal uh, with, with such an incredible nature uh, and, and scale has occurred in Europe. We'll be watching closely. Professor Alberto Alamano, thanks so much for your insights. Thanks to you for having me.